Just call me Emile. At least that's who I was before I met La Fée Verte. Before everything changed. Life for me began in the quiet countryside, under the shade of trees and in sight of the mountains. In a grand house under the southern sky, we sought refuge from the penetrating heat. Surrounded by the illusions of classical beauty and the whispered mirage of cooling oases. But truly, we hardly ventured out of the thick walls of our prison, walled in by traditions as firm as iron bars. Obedient, listless, I grew to manhood, always within earshot of the echoes of my family. Stayed, bourgeoisie, always under the piercing, watchful eye of my father the source of our material comfort, the leg iron that bound us eternally to the land and our ennui. A free spirit trapped in this house, I was also confined by a stunted body, crippled by a childhood illness. Occasionally, neighbors would visit to share the latest insipid gossip from the village. These tales were largely elaborate fictions about the working class whose main vices were drinking, smoking, and playing cards in the dim afternoon light before wandering home to wives and bed. One night I could stand the boredom no longer. Like an unchained dog, I slipped out of my father's gates. Heading down the road, I knew not where. Somewhere, anywhere, was better than the nowhere that was my life. Some night creatures are inexplicably drawn to light, and I was such a beast, fluttering toward the night cafe and its promise of camaraderie and conversation about the modern life in the cities, so different from our provincial ways. Even in our village, this vitality was seeping in, championed by artists, poets, painters, and magicians. One such chameleon, flicking his tongue, approached me with beautiful words, offering to open my eyes with a potion. La Fée Verte, the green fairy, the spiritual essence of our age, the one true path to artistic and spiritual enlightenment. An iridescent dram would open the new world I longed for, had fled my home for. I drank deeply, ever so deeply. Immediately the room swayed. My head lifted off my hunched shoulders. Figures emerged from the shadows as brilliant visions of color and light, and something incomprehensible, a touch bizarre. Their forms were afire with sunlight, despite the surrounding night, as if sunstruck by madness. The entire room was transformed, torpid figures and intense zealots all speaking at once, and yet I could understand them. Every atom of the room shouted with one voice, Paint the world as you see it, as it is. Go forth to find your destiny. The green fairy lifted me up onto my feet. I rushed out into the night, the beautiful night. Clouds, houses, trees, even the road I had traveled so often were alive and electric, to use the modern word. But the world my eyes perceived that night was not illuminated by dim electric bulbs. The night, the world, the cosmos were all blazing with an inner light. I was the world. The world was me. We were one beautiful flowing vision, 
each particle of light inseparable from its fellows. I was enthralled by the magical destiny before me. My new life in this new century would begin now as a new modern artist.